that rain was great for the beans, but with no pre-emergent out there, um, the seed bed of all the water hemp jump took off. So uh, I got off work. I closed at the cigar shop, got out of there at 8 p.m., uh, came flying home, changed clothes, ate a spot, and disconnected the planter, well, the grain drill from the uh, little ford and went down there in the edge of the woods and yelled, uh, snake, get out of here, I'm coming in here. Didn't see no snake. I don't like snakes. Uh, and I got this little tank out and everything's been racing through my mind of what all's got to be done here before I can even spray the first bean. Now, when I put the tank up last year, I did rinse chemical out of it, but uh, the chemical that was in it was uh, Liberty Link, and Liberty Link's what I'm going to put back in it. But this tank sweats. I have covered the top of it with a trash bag. It's tight, trying to keep rainwater out of it. And it's not rainwater. It's condensation that will build up in this tank. There's inch and a half down there in the bottom, and it's going to have the green stuff in it, so I'm going to have to rinse that out. And then every one of the sprayer nozzles has got to be taken apart and cleaned. Uh, get my fancy remote control arm mounted back up here on the fender, right here on the tractor. And then there's uh, put the PTO pump together and get it down there on the PTO. So I probably got a good hour and a half here tonight before I even get started on this. And uh, so thank God for LED lights. At least I got a well-lit work area right there. And uh, hold the camera down so I don't put it into these LED lights that I'm using to light up the area. And I got a good work area right here. LED lights again, I converted that some time ago. This is the little storage box where I put my pump and all the components that go together with it. It was put up clean and lubed. So I expect to be able to get it out of here throw it in the vise here and start putting it all back together. Uh, I have found that if I take the thing apart and clean it and lube it, um, I can get a lot of years out of it. Um, cheap pump. First one went 13 years before it ceased to you know, make pressure and pump for me. All right, let's get started, get something done. All right, you can see here, that, 20 after 11 and uh, anybody who's ever done that can recognize what I got here on the bench laid out here and uh, <laughs> curveball first time in 19 years I've had pump rush solid would not turn had it in the vise here put the big wrench on it figured if I could just break it free and turn it I could you know use it but uh, couldn't do it. Didn't leave enough WD-40 inside of it or something. So anyhow, took it apart and uh, glanced through, actually read through these instructions here about it. I can see how the parts in this thing I bought about five years ago thinking, yeah, I'll rebuild the pump next time I lose pressure. So what happened to the first pump is these roller bearings, roller balls or whatever you call them, roller pump, it's roller something here, rollers, we'll leave it at that, uh, they got wore out and I couldn't make pressure on that pump and I was in a hurry and had no idea how to do this or get this far with this so I just bought this pump and the old pump was in the box over there and then one day in my leisure I said well I'll buy this rebuild kit, it was about five years ago and here I am out of necessity because i got to get some spraying done first thing tomorrow morning. I've got to pump the part. And from what I see here, I need to somehow get some of this rust out of this thing. And uh, probably get this O-ring out, get a new O-ring in. <coughs> and see about, there's some kind of seal. I don't understand all this yet. There's a bearing in here and some kind of seal in there that goes with that. But uh, 
curveball, pit stop, U-turn. Not what I expected. So, let's see if I can get this thing cleaned up and somehow get it back together. Make it work. Talk to y'all later. Well, folks, this really and truly was not that difficult. Um, the difficult part was pressing this back into this without these rollers falling out. I went about three times, and fortunately I didn't mess up a roller, but uh, there's six of them in there, and it kept falling out. So I just stopped, thought about it for a minute, and I heard that wonderful voice say, go to the house and get a rubber band. So I did, and you see that yellow thing right there? That's a rubber band, and it's uh, just tight enough to hold them in place until I get this piece here back down to about right here. And then I can reach in there with a pair of needle nose pliers and stretch that rubber band until it breaks or I'll cut it with my pocket knife and get it out of there. Uh, so I think I'm real close to getting this back together and uh, performing my successful roller pump rebuild. Yeehaw. All right, I sure wish I had my glasses. You'd be watching the whole thing, but they broke. So uh, we'll be back in a little while. All right, little update. It's next morning. Uh, I went and got my new hoses. I didn't have, the hoses had holes in them last night, so I couldn't test this. I wanted to get out here and test it, and I had no clue that this was going to work. The uh, pump, after I rebuilt it and got it all back together, it was so tight. I just said, that's so tight, I just don't know whether that's going to work or not. But uh, turns out it did. It made good pressure, too, because... Uh, I was glad I hadn't bolted my control valve down yet. It bolts down right here. It makes a nice convenient location right here beside the operator seat. But that's plastic. And over the course of the winter, it busted. You see the big old crack in it right there. And it's went spraying water out all over the place there. Uh, so I just found out that the local True Value hardware store got a plumbing section and they got these valves. I'm just hoping I can get this piece out and get this out without breaking these pieces and having to go buy them too. But uh, it's positive. I'm, I'm well pleased with uh, my first rebuild on a PTO pump. That's a high pro six roller pump. So we're getting there. We're getting there. Definitely not going to be spraying this morning. Uh, so maybe I'll make it a evening spraying. But I. Definitely got to get out there and get on those uh, water hemp's. Well, let's run over to the uh, True Value hardware store and pick up a valve. Really feel good about what I just accomplished here. I just completed spraying that uh, two acres right here, and not ideal conditions. Had a little bit of wind, so I had to lower the boom to absolute lowest possible setting. Uh, you can't get too low, or you'll mess up your uh, overlap between the actual spray nozzles. But this feels. It's got one heck of a seed bed in it. Last year I had the pre on it, didn't see all the weeds. Uh, I knew they were there, the pre worked great. Didn't use the pre this year, uh, but I got on these beans early and got them sprayed. Um, that's about the height that I like to get them. Uh, don't like to spray them any smaller than this because you'll actually see them get stunned. 
But we'll just go right here and set the camera on the ground. Give you a hand picture there. That's about average size. But this place is just wrapped up with every kind of weed in the world. Um, but I caught them young and way before they were ever going to make a seed. And that's the objective. When you get out here and, you know, this kind of weed control, get rid of the weed before it makes a seed. And if you've got some breakthrough and you're willing to go out there and do the work and pull it out of the field, you can save yourself a lot of headache. Anytime you let a weed sit out there in your field or your yard and make a seed, well, you had one, now you'll probably have 200. But I'm real pleased with this. It was a fight getting that sprayer to go this year, but uh, I won. All right, everybody, I'm gonna wrap this video up. This thing's probably gotten longer than I wanted it to get. Thanks for watching. Bye, y'all.